Hey everyone, welcome back to The Privacy Guy. Um, today I want to discuss internet tracking and give you a few tips about how to protect yourself from um, some of the more common trackers that uh, people run into on the internet. Uh, so first of all, what is internet tracking? Um, basically, it's just any collection of your information. Um, it can come from a single web page. It can come from an app. It can come from uh, like a pixel on a website. There's a number of ways that websites actually do this or that uh, internet connected apps do this. Um, but it's basically just um, trying to determine what, you, what you're doing. So tracking your behavior uh, and then things like tracking your identity or tracking your location. Those are a couple other things that um, certain websites do. So how does online tracking work? Um, there's a few ways that websites track you. And there's three kind of primary ways that websites do this. And one is cookies, two is fingerprinting, and three is beacons. Um, the first one, cookies are small files that uh, when you go to a website, these cookies or small files are stored in your browser. And the website uses that to um, kind of store knowledge about you or store certain certain information that allows them to kind of change the experience you get. So a few examples of cookies would be like um, something that says you're logged in. So when you leave a website and come back, you're still going to be logged in to your account or something uh, that, you know, e-commerce sites use cookies to maintain your shopping cart. So if you've added items to your cart, then you leave the site and come back. Cookies are what allow the site to keep your cart current and up to date with what you've added to your cart. Uh, next up is fingerprinting. This one is a little uh, kind of kind of general, I guess. It's uh, not a way to very effectively track individual users, but it, it can provide some information um, that websites could potentially use to identify you. And what fingerprinting is, is um, collecting information about, you know, what operating system your computer is using, what dimension your browser window is, um, maybe what operating system your device is on, whether you're on Windows or Mac, uh, what browser you're using, etc. Um, a website could, you know, use this information to get a better idea of who you are, um, but many of the bits of information collected from fingerprinting aren't going to individually identify you. Um, and then next up are beacons. Beacons are um, something like Facebook pixels, where Facebook wants to track you not only on Facebook, but on other websites that you visit as well. So they'll use beacons or pixels to, uh, to tell where you're going online. So if you're logged into Facebook and there's a Facebook pixel on a website you visit, um, the pixel will recognize that you're logged into your Facebook account and will send that information back to Facebook or to the website you're visiting so that they can identify you and tie that information to your specific profile. Um, and then kind of what all this stuff plays into is your data profile. Um, once a website or internet connected app is able to determine your identity, uh, they assemble that information in what's called a data profile. That's kind of just all the information they have about you stored in one place. And they use that to advertise to you. They use that to market to you. They basically just, you know, store all that data because it might be useful to them at some point down the line. Um, so I went through what cookies, beacons, and fingerprinting are. Um, now I just want to share which websites are kind of associated with tracking and uh, which services, I guess, um, which services track you the most on the internet. And the leader by far is Google. So Google has kind of mastered this. Um, one, they're able to get the search data of billions of people on a daily basis. Um, so they're able to tell what sites people go to from their search engine. Um, but then they also offer other services that require users to log into a Google account 
so that they're able to tie those search information back to a user's Google account. So Google's really good at doing that. And the, the services that they use to do this are like Google Analytics, um, Google Tag Manager, even Google Fonts. So if someone's using certain Google Fonts on their website, uh, that could potentially be used to send information back to Google. So um, Google's really good at doing this. Uh, and a lot of times people don't even think about how Google's tracking you know, their website users um, just because maybe they've used a Google font or they have Google Tag Manager installed to help optimize their kind of conversion process on their site. Um, next up, you have Facebook. Facebook apparently has trackers on 25% of web traffic. Um, so that's pretty impressive considering that, you know, there's a large percentage of internet traffic that probably nobody's tracking, but Google or Facebook has managed to get a quarter of that. So um, they've been able to do that just by offering their social media platform and then also offering like advertising tools and business analytics. Um, so websites will add that, that code to their sites. Um, and then there's kind of a number of other ones. Many of them are tied back to Google and Facebook. Um, things like YouTube, things like uh, different Google APIs, um, Google content syndication. These are all just ways that Google can collect information about uh, different people's internet usage. Um, and then the third, third one is Amazon. Amazon uses things like Amazon Ad System, um, Amazon Hosting, Amazon CloudFront, which is a content delivery network. Um, there's just kind of other leaders in there like Twitter, you know, um, other social media platforms will also track users to uh, help advertise to them, but it's primarily Google, Amazon, um, and Facebook. Um, so as a privacy advocate, um, obviously I have a problem with much of the tracking that's going on on the internet. Um, I will admit that I think some tracking is okay because it does drastically improve user experiences with some platforms, some tools, but primarily um, I think it's overused and could, you know, potentially we could take away probably 75% of the tracking on the internet and end users would see very little change. Um, even the websites themselves may not be getting anything from the tracking that they're doing, uh, but they're just kind of assembling all this data, which puts them at risk for potential hacks and puts all of their users in danger of losing control of their information. Um, so I believe that tracking isn't a necessity. Um, a lot of websites, as soon as they start, they might be getting five visitors a day. They think that they need analytics on their site. And in some cases they do, um, but there are privacy alternatives to things like Google Analytics um, so that people can still collect information about users visiting their site, but um, avoid contributing to Google's data stores, basically. Um, so a few ways that you can avoid being tracked on the internet. Um, these are pretty simple, and I think you can probably uh, kind of figure these out, even if you don't have a lot of technical skills or, you know, programming knowledge or anything like that. Um, first off, I would recommend using tracker blockers. Um, these come in the form of browser extensions or potentially other desktop installed software, but um, things like ad blockers are a version of tracker blockers because many ads contain tracking scripts. Um, so when you block the ads from loading, these tracking scripts are blocked from loading as well. Um, things like uh, Ghostery or Privacy Badger are a couple examples of some browser extensions that can block trackers on sites you visit. And I know that Mozilla Firefox also offers some track tracker blocking uh, in its newer versions of Firefox, um, especially if you're using a private browsing window. In Firefox, um, you can block trackers with the, just the browser itself without extensions. Um, next up is I recommend using a VPN. Um, I can kind of get into more detail in another video about how to use a VPN and the safest ways to do that. Um, one thing I will say is VPNs 
are not the end all be all as far as privacy tools. Um, if you're not familiar with VPNs, it's a virtual private network. And basically it just reroutes your internet connection through different networks hosted kind of virtually around the world, I guess. So if you're connected to a VPN, you can make it look like you're coming from say California when you're actually browsing from Texas. Um, it's just one way to kind of blur or obfuscate your identity, make it a little more anonymous so that websites can't see your local IP address. Um, but just because you're connected to a VPN doesn't mean you're 100% safe. So that's just one kind of note that I would add there. Um, and then the final thing I want to cover is do not track. Um, basically, what do not track is, is a message included in a number of internet browsers that send a request to the websites you visit that say, please don't track me. Um, and that's basically all it does. Um, I will say that most websites don't really have the technology set up or they don't even respect this request to not track you. So even if you have do not track turned on on your browser, say Safari, um, Mozilla Firefox or Google Chrome, many websites don't even listen to that request. Um, so that's just one thing to note that you may not be protected as much as you think just because you've enabled do not track. Um, so that's kind of all I wanted to cover. I just wanted to give you an idea of how to protect yourself from tracking and just kind of the basic overview of what, what it looks like to be tracked online. So thanks for watching today. Um, I'd really appreciate uh, you subscribing if you made it to the end of the video. Uh, it means a lot. I'm trying to grow my following as a privacy advocate. I think it's uh, an important message to share. Um, so thanks for watching and stay tuned for more videos soon.